one's been building up deep inside for a little while now. And since I kind of got the steam rolling after the problems I have with Panic at the Disco video really picked up some traction, I wanted to go ahead and strike while the iron was hot and while I was firing on all cylinders. Tom DeLong is the subject today. And at the end of the day, I, I dislike him, but I don't want to say that I hate him as a person. He has his things that he enjoys. And as always, this is just how I see things. I understand that people are going to perceive things differently. And if you want to defend Tom or if you have facts that I might not be aware of, just let me know with a comment. But uh, anyways, I'm going to be throwing some things up on screen throughout the video. Feel free to check out references and that sort of thing. But this is a little story of me and Tom DeLonge. I grew up right when Blink-182, like I, I felt like I was just growing up and getting into them right when they split and that kind of sucked. One of my cousin's friends uh, was really into them. His name was Adam and he was like, oh, there's a song called Adam's Song and I listened to it and I really liked it and then I heard like all the small things and all that stuff. But Tom DeLong uh, is one of the lead singers, was one of the lead singers, now an ex-member of Blink-182 alongside Mark Hoppus and of course drummer Travis Barker. A uh, really exciting band, one of my favorites, always probably going to be one of my all-time favorites. And we watched him go from this fun-loving guy just to somebody who went up on stage and just doesn't really give a fuck anymore. It didn't seem like he cared about Blink-182 after 2003, 2004, even when they came back with that LP Neighborhoods and even Dogs Eating Dogs. It's like he was there, but was he really? They recorded the studio album Neighborhoods in different studios. And that's one of the first problems I guess I have is the fact that he just disconnected himself and pushed himself further and further away from these guys, supposedly two of his best friends. And even though he's gone on record as saying that he will never dislike Mark Hoppus, I don't know how he feels about Travis Barker, even though Barker doesn't have a problem with him, just wants him to man up and leave the damn band for sure, for good, never come back, don't crawl on your hands and knees when all of your other 80 projects don't work out from you five years from now, just say goodbye and good riddance to Blink forever, let them carry on with Matt Skiba or whoever else they get in the future as a replacement. Um, I think that everything circles back to Tom not really having a spine and not really standing on his own legs. He kind of hides behind a curtain of a manager or an editor and he gives a lot of excuses and he makes a lot of promises. And whenever I say he hides behind a manager, I don't know if you guys knew this, but back in 2004 or five, whenever they initially broke up for the first time, I believe it was 2005, the other guys were not aware that they were breaking up until they got an email from Tom's manager. He didn't even have the spine or the balls to tell them in person. He quit via email. One of the most successful bands in the world at the time. And you quit with a fucking email. Not even from yourself. I mean, emailing, like, it's like texting somebody for a breakup, basically. Oh, we're not going to be together anymore. But imagine having your mom text a girl or a guy for you and say, you know what, we're not going to be together anymore. That would just be a slap to the face. And how do you think that the other band members felt? I understand that there's three people in this band and it's hard to all be firing on the same cylinder at all times. But it's a work in progress at all times and it never really seemed like Tom cared that much. He started having Angels and Airwaves, which yes, I like some of their material, but he tries so, so hard with that. He tries to do too many things at once. He was trying to juggle Blink, his original band, then throw in Angels and Airwaves, then throw in To The Stars Media, his company that he started, then throw in the Poet Anderson novels, and then throw in 80 other novels and UFOs because he loves UFOs and he has a Strange Times website. How many things can one man handle? It's clear to me that Tom DeLonge got in way over his head and just kind of lost his mind and his sanity and his ability to deal with people in general. Like I said, I remember watching Riding in Vans with Boys, the documentary where Blink and Green Day and Jimmy World went out on tour together and they were having so much fun. You watched Tom cutting loose 
Even though he was starting to grow up a little bit more, I believe he even had a wife or had just gotten married at that point, he was still a fun guy to be around and it was clear that people enjoyed being in his presence. But then we slowly see him start giving less and less fucks up on stage. The guitar playing just got so sloppy and eventually he's basically just wailing on stage and the vocals are just so off. <laughs> I mean, I understand blowing your voice out and not being able to sing as great as you used to be, but whenever I saw them live in 2011, it just didn't even seem like he was trying to stay on key, and he didn't really have that much of a presence. He wore the same damn shirt like every night of tour, and it was an Angels and Airwaves shirt. If you guys have ever seen the poster that's up on my wall in the background of most of my videos, I'll throw a screenshot up on screen here, then you know that that's pretty, and if you caught them on that tour, you know he was wearing that like all the times, like seemingly promoting his other stuff even while he was in Blink, like using the success of the Blink name to be like, hey, I, you know, I do this too. Why don't you go check that out? I don't really, I, you know, I'm here, you know, I'm just like, I'm doing it because I'm being friendly, but I don't really care that much. Go check out Angels and Airwaves and buy my book and check out my website. I'm not saying that that's all he did, but it just seems like he, he makes a lot of statements and he also makes a lot of promises that he cannot keep. I know that for a fact. I mean, you guys remember back in like 2013, which was like, or maybe it was actually, I think it was 2012, whenever Angels and Airwaves was supposed to come up with a follow-up to Love. Part one, part two, I think that was 2010, 2011, they're like, another album dropping next year. Except it doesn't come. We get a little bit of something with stomping the Phantom Break pedal, but they're like, full length album, definitely coming. Definitely coming 2013. Definitely coming 2014. All of 2014 rolls by. Oh, it's coming out on Halloween. Doesn't come out on Halloween. Gets delayed all the way to the very end of the year. It's just like, dude. And then he says in 2015 that he has how many albums dropping in 2015? He says he's got four albums dropping in 2015. And I believe, if I'm correct, other than a little EP that we got, if we're counting that as an album, then we got two. But from Tom DeLong related projects in 2015, in terms of music, we got two things, not four. An EP for Angels and Airwaves, which only had a handful of small songs on it, and a collection of odds and ends, b-sides and scrap demos that he had collected over the years. I mean, Golden Showers in the Golden State sounds like something he would have written in 1999. But hey, you know, apparently four albums were supposed to come out. Stop making such big statements, Tom. You, you talk too big of a game. Nobody buys it at this point. I understand that Mark and Travis definitely have their flaws, and I have my gripes with the way that they handle things so publicly as well. But at the same time, you're the one that's being an absolute little bitch here. That's what I said. You guys heard me. Because, he, like I said, he stands behind others and he can't stand up to them for himself. It's like he won't talk to them in person. He wrote them a letter telling them this stuff this time. Like, hey, you know, I can't really record or I can do it on a certain schedule or maybe I can fit it in here. I know you guys are trying to work out new music for our beloved fans and, you know, you want to get a record deal, but I'm just not going to cooperate and I'm going to record every now and then. And it's just like Travis Barker said, dude, man up quit the band and let us move on. Travis Barker is able to balance a bunch of different stuff, working with the transplants. Of course, he did Plus 44 back in the day. He does all this solo stuff, collaborates with a ton of rappers, but still at the end of the day, he has so much passion and drive for Blink. Yet Tom DeLonge never seemed to exude any of that. It's just a little mysterious to me. Remember who got you to where you are today, Tom. It's the fans, and don't come crawling back. We don't want you. Whenever your projects don't work out as good as you expected, maybe you don't sell as many copies of that book, or less and less people start to care about angels and airwaves, and you start to wonder if you did something wrong, do us all a favor and don't try to come back to blink. Don't embarrass yourself. That was just me thinking out loud, guys. I try to do as few cuts as possible with these videos, and I think I kept it pretty straight forward and to the point. I hope you enjoyed this. Keep in mind, once again, this is just how I see things, so hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy this. I've got a lot more 
other interesting content coming on the channel, track reviews, music news, a couple of different series like a countdown show, seven on Sunday. If you're curious, there's more linked in the description down below. Check out the last two problems videos that I've done by clicking directly below me on either of those annotations there. And uh, yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys very soon right here on Beyond AR TV.